The Boss Dr. Sample SP303, an incredibly iconic sampler that came out in 2001, most notable for its super gritty, grimy lo-fi effects modules, and for also being used on some all-time great hip-hop albums like Jay Dilla's Donuts and Mad Villain's Mad Villainy. But once I heard that Flying Lotus supposedly used this on some of his earlier work, I began diving into the world of the SP303 and all of its lo-fi goodness, and I knew that I would have to get my hands on one someday. And you guessed it, I, I did. So in this video, I'll be showing you four different ways that you can make music with this thing and how it can really shine in giving you some really fantastic lo-fi textures. I'll also be giving my thoughts on if this legendary sampler is worth the hype, as well as some potential alternatives for recreating one of the most popular effects in this machine. It's the final sim. So without further ado, let's hop over into the 303 and I'll show you what I wanna show you. Okay, so here we go. Here's the 303 in all of its beauty. So something to mention right off the bat before we get into all the cool stuff about the 303. The 303 can utilize what are called smart media cards. You don't need one in order to use the 303, but I highly recommend it. The internal storage of the 303 is pretty pitiful. If you get a 303 without a smart media card, you will only be able to record about 30 seconds of audio in the normal sampling mode, which obviously does not give you very much flexibility to make full-fledged beats or, you know, anything like that. If you do intend on getting one of these, I highly recommend finding a listing where the seller offers uh, the smart media card with the 303. That's what happened in my case. Um, you can find other smart media cards out there. Just make sure it's 3.3 volts because that's what the 303 takes. So in terms of the way it's laid out, you got eight pads right here uh, that can all be played polyphonically, uh, meaning that you can play you know, them at the same time. Each pad has a uh, reverse mode, a loop mode, and a gate mode. Pretty self-explanatory. Reverse just reverses the sample. Loop means that it loops the sample, and gate means that the sample only sounds while you're holding the pad down. So each pad also uh, has a stereo mode as well, so if you're recording a stereo source, uh, you can indicate that right here with this button. There's three different recording modes on the 303. You can record in standard, sampling mode, in long uh, recording mode, or lo-fi uh, mode. Basically, the sample rate is just being halved for each subsequent option. By recording with the long or lo-fi modes, it gives you more space, so meaning you can record more sound. Shout out to a creator on here called Jorb, by the way, his 303 video helped me out immensely with like learning some of the intricacies of the 303. I'm going to be citing a lot of information that he gave in that video in this one. So, uh, you know, if you don't like my video or if I'm not doing a good job of explaining stuff or you just want kind of a, you know, a second opinion on certain things or whatnot, go check out Jorb's video on the 303. It's a fantastic video. <laughs> So the first way in which you could make beats with this thing, uh, the most like classic way um, I would call it is by sampling a record. So let's just go ahead and do that really quick. Hopefully I don't get a copyright strike on this video. All right, so I got this uh, sample loaded up here in Ableton. I just YouTube to MP3'd it. The traditional way of doing this would be to actually have the record on vinyl and hook your record player up to the 303 and sample onto it that way, but I don't have a record player. For the purpose of this video, I'm just ripping stuff off of YouTube and kind of trying to mimic the process a little bit in Ableton. So the sample is Alakazam by Sonny Ross. I'll go ahead and show you how I recorded like the main part of uh, this beat that I made on the 303. So I already have this part recorded on pad two. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, delete that. Uh, deleting sounds on the 303, uh, if you're on the internal banks, uh, which are A and B, the smart media card banks are C and D. Deleting a sound on the internal banks takes ages. Just watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. All right, so, you know, 20 years later, that's finally deleted, and now pad two is empty. It's not making any any sound. And now I'm gonna go over here under the 303, click external source. So now we're monitoring what's coming into the 303 uh, from the output of my interface. And the way I'm routing this in Ableton is just by going over here to the output of the audio track uh, where it says master. Just click external out and then select the output that your external device is plugged into. In my case, it's channel 3-4, but it might be different for you, depending on how you have your stuff set up. 
And now, uh, if I play something here in Ableton, we should be able to hear it through the 303. And... We have sound. You can tell right here because this r red uh, light is lighting up. That lets us know that stuff is coming through. Now I'm going to go ahead here and hit the record button. Now we have to choose a pad to assign the sound to. So, you know, I'm going to choose pad two. That's where I had it before. And now this is where we choose where if we want our sound to be stereo. I do. Uh, we're recording from a stereo source. I'm going to go ahead and select my uh, recording mode right here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this button once to indicate that we I want to record in long mode. What just happened to my light? Oh boy. All right, and okay, we just ran out of space right there anyway, but that's okay. I was just, I was going to stop it there anyway. <laughs> but as you just saw there, it said full right here on the screen. So now we have our sample here on pad two. So now it's time to chop this sample up. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and play the sample. And right when I hear where I want the loop to start, I'm going to press this mark button right here. So let's go ahead and give that a try. And I'm going to keep going until it gets to the end of where I want it to loop. And I'm going to hit this again. Okay. So now we should theoretically have a loop here, but you know, we might want to fine tune it a little bit. Uh, so for fine tuning, what I do here is I go to the sample edit tab right here. And this button right here is uh, where we adjust our start and end points. We use these two knobs to find the start and the end points. This knob is the start, this knob is the end. So that transient got a little cut off. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and wind the sample back a little bit to where we get that transient of the kick drum in a little bit. I like that right there. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the end point, which this one's a little more tedious because you have to wait till it gets all the way to the end. That actually sounds pretty good. So now we have our main loop. And I did a few other chops of this sample as well on pads one, three, four, and five uh, in preparation for this video. I got this part. Which is the beginning of the song. I have this part. which is kind of like used for a turnaround. And then this was just, I recorded this in. Just as kind of like a little embellishment stab. Kind of corny, but you know, whatever. And then I have this exact same sound that I resampled onto pad five, um, and I just reversed it. So resampling is just taking a sound from one pad and basically copy pasting it to another pad. The uh, process is pretty simple. I'll go ahead and delete pad five and show you really quick because I don't have any more room. So if you want to resample, all you got to do is click the resampling button right here. Click record, uh, you know, indicate which pad you want the sound to be assigned to. Um, go ahead and choose what recording mode and, uh, you know, whether it's stereo or mono, uh, go ahead and hit record. And now you just go ahead and hit the pad that you want to be the source of what you're resampling, in this case, pad four. That's it, and now, okay, we're full again. So, that sounds pretty good to me. So now all I have to do is just click pad five, click reverse, and now we have our little swell that we might use for a certain section. So then what I ended up doing is I ended up putting vinyl sim on this beat, of course. Yeah, baby, that's what I've been waiting for. So to put an effect on a pad, Select the pad that you want to put the effect on. Hit set effect. Now it's on. This knob adjusts the compression amount for the vinyl sim. This knob adjusts the noise. This knob adjusts how much flutter, kind of like warble there is to the sound. But I want to put that on all the pads. So we hold down this remain button. Hit Vinyl Sim, and now we just applied Vinyl Sim to everything in this uh, area. So now, you know, go ahead and play with it a little bit. I don't know. 
I don't know, whatever. And then you chop it up however you want to chop it up. There's the beat. The next way that I like to use the 303 to make music is to basically take this exact same approach but make your own samples. So if we go over here into Ableton, I have a few samples that I made. Got a drum break here that I made in Easy Drummer. I have these Rhodes chords that I made in Lounge Lizard. And then I have a little sustained violin string. So I made this beat over on bank D. Got my drum loop here. Uh, I chopped up all of my uh, Rhodes chords. And then I have the violin string down here on pad seven. And now, again, put vinyl sim on everything because why not? Yeah, so I was just suggest going in Ableton and just making your own sounds with your VST plugins, instruments, whatever, and just sampling them onto the 303 and get some really cool results. So a third way to use the 303 to make music is to actually just use it as an effects box. This is actually the original reason I wanted the 303 was I just wanted it for its effects. Got another beat here that I made. So I just have a sample here that I got from the Oasis Happy Holidays kit. And all I did was just run this through the flanger on the 303, which gives it a pretty cool sound. So basically what I like to do when I'm using the 303 as an external effects box, uh, I like to use an Ableton external audio effect, pop it down onto the track, and then I just change the audio to 3-4, the audio from 5-6, which is how I have it hooked up on my interface, might be different for you. And then now here we have our sample here. Uh, again, we have to make sure external source is clicked on the 303 and our volume is at a good level. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and navigate over to the flanger, which is located under this multi effects button right here, which branches out to all these that you see here. It's got a reverb, tape echo, chorus, flanger, phaser, tremolo, pan, distortion, overdrive, fuzz, wah, octave, compression, which is also really nice uh, compared to the vinyl sim. Uh, equalizer, lo-fi, noise gen, radio tuning, slicer, ring mod, chromatic PS, I forgot what that one is, voice trans, forgot what that one is too, and the C canceler, which just cancels out the center channel, which can give you some weird mid-side effects, but we're just going to do flanger, so we hold down the uh, effects button, we use this knob to navigate to the number that corresponds to the effect that we want, we want the flanger, which is four, and now, press play in Ableton, oh, getting a little distorted there. But now we can, you know. Have some fun here. I used some more effects for um, other parts of the song. We cut back here to the main sample loop. I'm running it through the filter plus drive effects module on the 303. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a filter with an overdrive knob. It's a, it's a filter that, that saturates your signal, basically, and you can get pretty extreme with it. You can get some pretty insane distorted tones out of it. I used that on the sample here. I was filtering out some highs and lows, and then what I did is, as the beat was playing, I turned up the drive knob uh, to kind of, like, automate some drive into the signal, so you'll see what I mean here. Also, um, ran the sample through the 303's pitch effect module, just as like some kind of atmospheric background ear candy. So then, in conjunction with that, what you can do is you can use the 303 as an effects box on an entire beat. And I think, namely, the most popular effect to probably use in this instance would be the vinyl sim. I basically set this up the exact same way. I just put an external audio effect on the master, set it up uh, how I want it set up. Boom. Uh, go down to the 303, make sure external source and stereo are on and adjust the volume accordingly. And all you gotta do from here is just turn on vinyl sim.
It's just a vibe. It's just such an easy way to get like a really cool pumpy sound. For reference, here's what it sounds like without the vinyl sim. Back on. So I mentioned that I'd be showing you some alternatives to uh, the vinyl sim since it's such a sought after effect, especially in lo-fi hip hop genres. The first one, and you know, a more expensive option, although cheaper than the 303, is to get Wolf Compressor by Good Hertz. It's a direct emulation of the 303 vinyl sim compressor, but it offers you a lot more flexibility and control over the sound. I have used Wolf Compressor on quite a few beats. I used it on my beat Daydreamer off of my new beat tape, Long Valley tapes that dropped a couple months ago. I used Wolf Compressor on my very first song I ever released, Post Up. Wolf Compressor is another very valid and very cool way to get kind of a vinyl sim sound, just to get a lo-fi sound. It's just, it's, Wolf Compressor is great. The other alternative to vinyl sim is a free alternative if you're an Ableton user. Although what I'm about to show you can also be recreated in any DAW because it's just stock plugins. It's just a lot of compression, a lot of saturation. Uh, you know, some filtering, maybe a little bit of downsampling as well. Just kind of experiment with crushing your sound with all those different kinds of effects. So pause, play, repeat offers a free SP303 vinyl sim emulation using just Ableton stock plugins, so it's entirely free. It was made with Ableton 10 stock plugins. Those should be compatible with Ableton 11. So here's those three different options uh, all compared to each other one by one. <laughs> So now my thoughts on the 303. It can get a little clunky. However, I really enjoy making beats with the 303. I think it's a lot of fun. Maybe it's because I've spent the last four and a half years making music on a computer in Ableton and the 303 is just something kind of fresh for me. It makes me approach music differently. There's not very much visual feedback. You're forced to really do everything with your ears. And I, I kind of like it. With that being said, this is also the one and only sampler I've ever owned. So, you know, I have yet to discover the advancements um, that newer samplers have made. And, you know, maybe I get my hands on like a brand new sampler and, and it just freaking blows my socks off and makes the 303 look like child's play. I don't know. And even if you don't have any interest in making beats with this thing, it is still an amazing effects box. The effects in here are top notch, especially for lo-fi genres and styles. I am so glad I got this just for that reason alone. The if, Especially the vinyl sim. I mean, oh my God, it's so good. I love it so much. Now the whole vinyl sim thing, do I think that you should get it just for the vinyl sim? No. The example I showed earlier in the video might not have been the best, but I really think that Wolf Compressor and even the stock Ableton plugins that emulate the vinyl sim are just as good, if not, you know, subjectively better than the vinyl sim. They both do exactly what the vinyl sim does, just slightly differently. I mean, the Wolf Compressor even has a SP303 preset within it. I mean, they, they are very similar and they're all designed to give you the same sound. Do I think it's worth what it's currently being charged for on the used market? Absolutely not, I but I, I understand it. I mean, this thing holds so much cultural relevance in hip hop and electronic music. Like, I get it, like the 303 is iconic. Look out there for a good deal, find one with a smart media card, and you know, if it's something that you are willing to pay for, uh, I would by all means recommend getting it. It's a fun little machine, it's really cool. But wait, that's not all. Little graphic right here. In lieu of this video, I'm going to be releasing a free sample pack uh, up on my Bandcamp. I'll put a link for it down in the description below. All the samples in the pack are being run through the effects modules on the 303. And if you're interested in that, go to my Bandcamp and download it. If you make anything on my samples, uh, just let me know in the comments below. I'd love to check it out and hear what you made. All right, well, I think that about does it for me for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll be back soon. Adios.